Welcome to The Real News Network. We're now joined by Katrina Vanden Heuvel. She's the editor and publisher of the magazine The Nation. Thanks for joining us, Katrina. So who is Barack Obama anyway? Uh, there's been a great debate in the uh, progressive movement generally, but particularly in the progressive movement, is this man actually a man of progressive politics? Uh, or is he just truly a man of what he, what he says he is, a man of the center? I don't know exactly who Barack Obama is. I would argue that he is broadly progressive, a kind of pragmatic progressive, believing in using s new tools toward solutions to deal with the crisis of the time. What I think is important is that he is the first community organizer in chief we've had in this country. And that, for the left, for progressives, is important. Because one thing Barack Obama did with this coalition he assembled, one thing he did do is oxygenate the grassroots. And that is crucial moving forward, because my view is that whoever Barack Obama is, that real change in this country has come from organized movements, small and large, online, offline in our times, moving and pushing bolder ideas onto the agenda of an administration and working inside and outside. We are no longer in a purely oppositional mood. We don't have a bunker in Washington, D.C. as we did with Cheney and Bush. If you go to the foreign policy world, if I read the pages of the nation, um, I can hardly find a position Barack Obama takes that the nation would agree with. Well, I think in these first hundred hours or so, I think the drawdown of forces in Iraq is a first step. We need to push to move all combat troops out and to end the occupation of Iraq. I think it's tough to separate the domestic and the foreign. If I could add, I think one of the issues the nation and progressives need to push onto the radar is to cut this wasteful defense budget that is going to make it very difficult for the administration to do some of what it wants to do. And there but are no allies. Suggestion, no suggestion at all from Obama. In fact, he's talking about adding more troops. Uh, he's, he's talking about it's, there's an opening, I believe, on the movement into Afghanistan. That's the next fight uh, for progressives, for those who want alternatives to military escalation and ongoing occupation. Robert Gates, according to our own correspondent Robert Dreyfus, in a press conference a few days ago, says they're rethinking or they're thinking. So there is a window of opportunity to seize. However, what, you, what you're right in saying is that the work we have to do is to continue to push for ideas to challenge the limits of the debate such as it, it, it is. Because no one's talking about dismantling the empire. No one's talking about... Well, even, even, no one's yet even talking about even any reduction in the military budget. Well, this isn't... Barack Obama is not. Robert Gates is not. Hillary Clinton isn't. But Barney Frank representative from Massachusetts, straight-line liberal, proposed a 25% cut in the defense budget last November. I have asked him to write a piece for the nation because that is a first step. When you have someone inside, elected, in Congress, and as you know, the Progressive Caucus, 71 strong, they have a very good unified security budget, proposing more than 50% cuts in the defense budget. So these are allies. I think there, there's probably a lot of allies in Congress on this, but, but in, in assessing Obama, we haven't heard a word from him on this. I think the progressive movement, such as it is progressives, the left, have to be as tough, clear-eyed, and pragmatic about Barack Obama as he is about us. I am not someone who sits around dreaming. I do think we are at a moment where those who campaign very hard for Obama, and there was a great surge of grassroots organizing, there needs to be a reassessment, the need for an independent movement outside of that Obama movement. And there are people who support him. But well, that's the, not the nation, the progressive. There is a support of key issues. In the next segment of our interview, we'll take on the issue of foreign policy. Because I, 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 my view is, I think a lot of the left in liberal America is letting Obama off the hook on foreign policy questions because everyone's so focused on domestic issues. Please join us again for the next segment of our interviews with Katrina Vanden Heuvel. Donate today and receive a new documentary film available to members of the Real News Network. The History of the National Security State with legendary author Gore Vidal. Bonus features of the DVD include an in-depth response to Vidal from ex-CIA analyst Ray McGovern, who served under seven U.S. presidents, an exclusive interview with Colin Powell's former chief of staff Larry Wilkerson, and an insightful interview with oil policy analyst Antonia Juhas. The news magazine of the screen. 
living glimpses of history in the making. Hollywood and Washington is a symbiotic relationship. They both deal with illusions. Reality doesn't often uh, play much of a part. I think I saw through a myth of the uh, Cold War almost from the beginning. I was a Washington political kid from a political family. Roosevelt first had radio because he had a, this great speaking voice that everyone liked to hear. Truman proceeded to break every arrangement that Roosevelt had set up for a peaceful coexistence. And Truman thought that it would be a good idea. Why not just stay armed all the time? And then he devised the national security state. You've got to go up and swear allegiance to the United States or else you're a commie. I mean, we, were, we had imported fascism. We get Dwight Eisenhower, who said that we have this great military industrial complex. It is a dangerous thing. And he said, this is going to change everything. And the way our country is governed, it's going to change us politically. Along comes Jack Kennedy, who wanted to make his mark, believed in the Cold War. But he said, in this kind of politics, it is the appearance of things that matters. I think everybody should take a sober look at the world about us. The national security state still exists, only it isn't communism anymore, it's terrorism. This is the most serious thing that has happened in the history of the United States. Knowledge is power. We need an honest new system. We need the real news. This is the sort of thing we can build right now without anyone else's permission from the government or from the business community. It's the powers in our hands. If we're not gonna sleepwalk into more wars, we think we need to start with a television news network that won't bow to pressure and has the courage to seek facts. And that means independent economics. And that's why we need you. Make a tax-deductible donation now of at least $10 a month or a one-time give of at least $75. As a thank you for your support, we will send you the new documentary film, The History of the National Security State.